last demo, I showed you how websites could be vulnerable to SQL injection attacks if we use ad hoc queries in our pages. In this demo, I'll show you how to resolve that issue by using stored procedures instead of ad hoc queries. But first, let's do some refactoring and cleanup of this code. The first change that we're going to make is to have our application get its connection string out of the web.config file instead of having it hard coded in our page here. So we're going to replace this connection string with a reference to the web configuration manager and its connection strings collection property and we're going to grab a connection called CN customer orders and we'll get the connection string element. Now notice it's telling us that it doesn't know what web configuration manager is so we're going to use the resolve option and resolve and add a using statement for using system.web.configuration since that's where our web configuration manager lives. And now we'll go into our web.config and we'll add the connection string. So in the web.config, in the configuration element, we're going to add the connection strings element. And inside of the connection strings element, we're going to add a new connection string with the name that we gave earlier, CN customer orders and the connection string set to server equals the current server slash SQL express instance and the database customer orders and we're going to use integrated security so we'll set that equal to true. Now that our web.config is set up, let's also clean up our code a little bit by reducing the amount of duplicated code by extracting a method from our page load event. So we're just going to highlight all of the code here in our page load event. Right click and choose refactor extract method. We'll call our new method get customers. Notice it replaces the code that was in the page load event with a call to our new getCustomers method. We'll make a couple minor changes to the getCustomers method to have it accept a string called strQuery as an argument. And instead of hard coding the select statement, we'll use our input parameter and then we'll pass our select statement as an argument to the get customers method. And then we'll just go and do the same thing with our search button. We'll take our code for the select statement from our search button, copy it into the paste buffer, and then we'll add a call to the get customers method, passing our statement as the argument to that method. And then we'll clean this code up by using a string format statement. So we'll start by adding string.format, open parenthesis. We'll add our close parenthesis down here at the bottom. And then instead of getting the value directly from the text box, we'll use parameter 0 for the first value. or last name equals and parameter zero again closing single quote uh, so we're checking for the first name or the last name equals the value in the text box we don't need the closing quote over here so that makes our statement a little more clean and we don't have the string concatenation going on but the end result is the same as it was before we can now search 
for customers by first or last name. So minor refactoring. Let's take a look and make sure the application runs again before we deal with the SQL injection attack. Search for first name. Works great. Search for last name. Also works great. And Unfortunately, the SQL injection attack also works, so let's deal with that. Oh. 